Hello everyone, welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker. This week coming to you from the frigid Arctic centre of Tasmania in the middle of winter. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. This is Lyawini, it's the coldest settlement in Tasmania, which makes it the coldest place in Australia, possibly the world. Possibly the world. Now we're going trout fishing yes. today. It's actually a beautiful day, which is a surprise. But uh, middle of winter, out of trout season, but you can still fish Great Lake. Great. What? Just Trout, cold, winter. Great. Try and be a bit more positive than that. He's such a naysayer. He's not doing this. Get a real job then. We're not saying that we're going to catch big fish. As is. Whoa! Do you want to jump here, have a swim? You're a twit. <laughs> Oh, I'm on a gun! It's a point well made, although you didn't make it that well. I love it. I love it. I think we bog. That's, That's not, not different. different. No. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Michael Barabell from Wilson's, mate. You're a Queenslander. I sure am. Welcome yeah. to Tasmania. You've never been here before and you've never caught a trout. No, this isn't the trout I was expecting. What were you expecting? Uh, coral trout. <laughs> coral trout. You're in Tasmania in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. Have a look at you. You said it was going to be a lovely day. It is a lovely day. It's beautiful. Well. Now, we are fishing the Great Lake. We're going to try and get you your first ever trout. Yep, looking forward to it. It's not ideal. I mean, you're going to be cold, and the fish at this time of year are generally a bit sluggish, a bit slimy. Yep. But I reckon we can fish one out. I hope so. What, what's our technique today, trout guru? <laughs> um, I'm just going to watch what you do right. and do exactly the opposite. Good. Excellent. Now, I've got control of your clothes, so uh, <laughs> just lock those up for a minute, Nick. Wait until you see Nick. Interesting day. Oh man, it's genuinely cold. It's actually a uh, little freezing. You can see the cloud just starting to creep over the mountains here behind me, and I reckon there's snow in those clouds. But we've got a fish on, and Barra, come on, bring the net down here. No worries, man. Man, look at that. Is this your first look at a trout? It is. Is this your first look at a famous Taz? Oh no! Oh no, he got off. <laughs> Oh, it's encouraging, no? Uh, Little soft plastic. You gonna change to soft plastic? Yeah. Barrow was using a hard-bodied lure. You should have netted that fish. <laughs> Hello, right, Barrow. We're just uh, a bit of a drop-off here. We're working along where that fish came from. Yeah. You're you love soft plastic, don't you? Yeah, love them. Good fun. What, is, what are you fish. What are you used to catching on them, though? Uh, brim. Flathead, uh, Squire, the snake. yeah, Barra, 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 <laughs> Saratoga, Toga, not trout. I would in fact recommend this as not a bad way to go trout fishing in winter in Tasmania. Um, a good quality sleeping bag, high loft, nice comfy bunk. And uh, wait for it all to be over. Caught one yet? Not yet. Caught we'll one give you a yell. Oh. This is interesting. We just went to move a little bit. The wind's just come up now. Just a bit of a wind chill factor. And check out the temperature of the water. It is 3.3 .3 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I don't think I've ever fished in water quite that cold. It's almost freezing. 3.3. .3. Can I come and join you? Would that be inappropriate? That would be completely inappropriate stay where you are. <sighs> Just be like a man hug. Save our lives. Body temperature. Oh. Yep. I am on. 
I am on. Oh, we're just slaying them these late season, well, not even out of season, winter brown. And I just want to point out to you again, over this hill, it's just slowly getting worse. And a bit of breeze is coming, and it's happening very, very quickly. It's very pleasant up here. Oh, shut up. Now, Barra, we're going to get this one in the boat. OK. Come on, Barra. I'll try not to let you down. Do they fight these, uh, these fish? Seems to have peeled a bit of string. Yes, here he is. They're actually, um, like they're, he's not a bad one actually. He's a pretty good fish. Isn't he awesome? <laughs> yes, so we've caught a fish in the middle of winter in Tassie. Now, if you want to just touch him and get him out of the net, <laughs> um, there's no spikes on trout, obviously, nothing that can hurt you, um, other than the fact that he's Horribly Got three slimy. Point three degrees of water on him. No, he's a good fish, Nick. Show me. We'll put him in the uh, bag with you shortly. Hold him up, Barry. Hold him up. He's got this Come nice on, stuck in here. You're on TV. Oops. Put him down there. That's all right. Right. They're a little bit slimy, aren't they? They're a bit slimy. They get this slime on them. I believe it's a protective slime because when they spawn, they go up the. Um, up the creeks, he might have actually already spawned. See here on his belly, he's all been knocked Scratch, about and scratched up, about because yeah. they go up the fast flowing creeks and lay their eggs like uh, old salmon used to. Put him back. By the time summer comes along, that'll be a three pound fish out of here, fat and full of fight. I'll borrow your gloves. What? I'll borrow your gloves, please. My gloves? Your gloves, you don't need them. Cone in there and it... these gloves. Yeah, can't borrow them, please. I'll hire them to you. <laughs> yeah. Five bucks. Hey? Five bucks. I don't know if I've got five bucks. Yep. Thank you. Alright. Wander up there. Giving you 20 bucks for those. It's not good. We're just slaying them. We are just absolutely slaying them. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. These poor fish have been up the creek, done their business. Now they're back in the lake, wanting to uh, we'll feed up because they're hungry. And Barra, what are you doing? Not much. Come on, man. Freezing. We're sort of waiting for you to catch a fish because once you catch a fish, then we can go. Almost done with it. Look at that. Oh, right, there he is. Dykes, what do yeah. you think? Look. What do you reckon? Don't even begin. Lovely fish. Don't do it. Don't, <laughs> don't fish. do it. It's a fish. It's a living thing. Now, even though it is a trout, and trout are an interesting species in that they're an introduced species here in Australia. They brought them out to Tassie in the 1800s in boats. They brought the eggs out on big blocks of ice. And uh, I don't know. It's sort of trout fishing should be the domain of former British army colonels, I reckon. Oh, this is your opinion, is it? Tell us, like tell us your opinion about trout fishing, come on. No, I do enjoy trout fishing in the summertime. You hate trout. Oh. You reckon they're introduced pests, much well, like the rabbits? Well, sort of like kiwi backpackers. Introduced pest species. But feel free. Uh, good fish. How much for your sloping bag? Five hundred dollars. But just a bit, consider it. Five hundred bucks and you can have it. For an hour. What? Five hundred bucks. No, five hundred bucks and you can have it until our friends from Queensland manage to catch a fish. Come on, Barra! Hypothermic. Oh, There's Barra. Look out behind Barra. I'd just like to point out the conditions now behind Barra. <laughs> Yes, it seems to be setting in a little bit up here in the <laughs> it's islands. It's just dropped a couple of degrees, so it must now be about all one. I reckon it would be 
It's in the positive, but only just <sighs> fair. The water's three degrees, for heaven's sake. Barra! Finally got one. <laughs> oh. Now, you, you uh, paid me 10 bucks for those gloves. We'll just tell people at home. Oh, it was the best 10 bucks I ever Now, Barra, please enjoy this trout fish. Enjoy the experience, mate, because... It's... Oh. It's unbelievable. <laughs> come out here, Nick. No. no come on. You've got Barra's a net. got a trout. Oh, I want I pictures. Want to celebrate. Beautiful little fish. Oh, no. Got him. Got him. Barra. Yeah. You're no longer a trout virgin. And this is the other bloke on the boat. He's got a rainbow. He's got a rainbow. He's not mic'd up. He's not in the show. Don't worry about him. Now, have a look at this. Have a look at this beautiful looking <laughs> just spawn trout. Here you go. They don't get much photo? prettier than that, do they? Get the camera. The trout season in Tasmania runs from the end of August through to April, but there are some exceptions. What you say is true and correct, Nick. Great Lake and Lake Burberry among some waters that remain open. He was doing a licence, so check it all out at your local tackle store. The trout we caught, by the way, ate soft plastics fished in about 15 feet of water. The Deep End. Brought to you by the University of Tasmania. Remember when the big kid at school took your lunch? The same thing happens in fish farms. The biggest fish gets more of the food, and stopping it is the subject of this next segment. Tell me what happens in schools of fish. Okay, um, in schools of fish, um, there's hierarchies normally set up. So uh, we, we try to work out ways that we can stop these hierarchies from forming. Well, what are some of the problems when a hierarchy is established? When hierarchies are established, especially in an aquaculture situation, it, um, it disturbs the, the equal growth of the fish. So farmers, ideally, would like their fish to all grow at around about the same rate so that when they take them to market, they're, they're an equal size. Um, if a hierarchy is set up, you can end up with situations where some of the fish end up quite small, some are quite large, and this causes problems for the farmers. The experiments will definitely help us to design better ways of feeding the fish by, um, by reducing the hierarchy formations within the tanks. Okay, folks, welcome back to Hook, Line and Sinker. Coming stop now, to stop you now. from the cab of our beautiful Mazda BT-50. But more importantly, we're coming to you this afternoon from Darwin. It's hot. This is Darwin Harbour and we're tomorrow. It's very, very hot. Heading out there to uh, hopefully catch a big mackerel. But this is the boat ramp, Nick. We need to be here before sun up. So yes. we did a bit of a recce. Research people, you see? Yes, so we yes. didn't get lost in the morning. No. We thought we'd spend the time between now and then with a yes. little bit of a cook's tour of Darwin, Andrew. A bit of a history lesson. You'll enjoy this. Great. Darwin was founded in 1869 and it's always hot and sticky. In World War II it was invaded by Japanese planes who bombed it. These days it's invaded by another force, English backpackers. They roam around the town's epicentre, Mitchell Street, and prey on unsuspecting visiting fishermen. Ah, oh, very good. All right, morning has broken here on Darwin Harbour and we're once again in the capable hands of Chris Sert of Lure One Fishing Charters here in Darwin. Chris, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Now, mate, you've got uh, a little bit of wire there, ganged hooks. That doesn't look like barra gear. No, it's just for toothy critters. Toothy critters? Yeah, we're looking for a Spanish mackerel today. Okay, Spanish mackerel, bit of a glamour species here in the harbour. Oh, terrific fish, terrific fish. Righto. Now, uh, we're not trolling, we're not uh, towing lures about, we're, uh, we're, we're uh, setting a trap for them today. Yeah, only because of this this particular area, when they're in numbers, trolling's fine. Yep. But when they're not in numbers, there'll be a so be just a few fish working around here. We'll con them up with a bit of burly and a teaser and a live bait. All right, now we've only been burling uh, for I don't know, 10 minutes and uh, Behind the burley pot, Chris, is what we want, garfish. Yeah, live garries, yeah. Garries are excellent bait. Yeah. And they're also what the mackerel are here for, is that right? Yeah, well, they eat them as well as other stuff here, but they're part of the food chain, yeah. Demonstrate to us how easy they are to catch. <laughs> live TV this is. Real-time 
live TV. Oh, and it actually worked. It never works that. Real time catch, and that's the first fish of the day. What a beauty. You yep. do. Now you're going to send him out live. Yep. All right, we won't show you that, but uh, he'll go out live under a little float like that, and the mackerel will grab it and we'll be on. Easy. Shot. Yep. Yeah. Fish? Yeah. Fish? You got a fish on? Got a fish on. He's coming straight for it. Wow. Wow. You've got a fish on. This oh. is good. This is what we wanted, Chris. Looks yeah. Like it's happening? Yes. It sort of all happens when it happens, doesn't it? It. Um, we've been sort of sitting out here, I guess, for what an hour or something. I suppose. Oh. oh. It's big skinny. Big queenie. Yeah. Big skinny. Big yeah. skinny. And then all of a sudden, the we're just went off. the um, we're just commenting that there are a few birds gathering about behind the back of the boat, and there was sort of some very small bait out near our baits, and it just kind of looked good. It did look good, didn't it? Oh, it looked even better as soon as the tide keeps running out. Whoa, look, that's, that's a good fish. fish. Wow! All the leverage he's got. Yeah, he is. He's bleeding. bleeding. Come here. Yeah. There he is. Oh. Look at that. Have a look at that. Fish. Get your fingers look. Oh, now they've got spikes on them. Yeah. How about that? The Darwin Harbour Queen fish. Nice fish. How big's he? Oh, he's. Miss... Four or five kilos, they're pretty yeah. skinny. They are pretty skinny, yeah. that's what they call them up yeah. here. Skinny. He's bleeding a bit too. We'll get Trying this fish in. back in the water. Yep. Oh. Oh. oh, Chris, got him? Yep. Right. Good work. All right. All right. Well, that's good. That's something. After the break, it's a Mac attack. Time to talk about tackle now on hook, line, and sinker. And I'm joined by Anthony Pavlo from Wilson today, mate. Very, very spooky subject. We're talking about the ghost range of shore catch reels, and they're a cracker for an entry level reel. Look, they are a very good reel, value for money. We do them in various sizes, and yep. then your typical spinning reel. Big, small, and everything in between? Yes. Now, what are the features of this reel? Uh, we've got a front smooth drag system, yep. anti reverse, which is very important, and we do put stainless steel ball bearings inside. Sealed stainless ball bearings, so you haven't skimped on the inside mechanics where it counts most. It's very important and uh, we do offer a very, very good warranty. Now the warranty, get this, is how long? Five years. Five years, so that's an amazing warranty covering your beautiful Ghost Shore Catch reel. Huge range of sizes as we've already mentioned and just trouble free entry level. Fish. Very good reliable reel. Check them out, the Shore Catch Ghost at a tackle shop near you. We've managed to catch a fish here. I've seen a heap of, uh, you know, sort of bait smashing up hardy in bits and pieces. And mackerel. Mackerel. Smashing them. Not, not the big Spaniards that we're after, but just little school mackerel. And they've been hard to catch. They We've have been. To, uh, Down here. That's quite nice. Really. Just, just, they're very good table fish. They're a very good table fish. Very good table fish. Good. good. Right. Well, Try and get him out before he cuts But they off. have been, they've been really finicking. We've sort of had, we started off with a double on this and a, and a sort of slightly bigger lure and we've played around with lure sizes and gone down to just straight down to a very small little anchovy style pattern, Chris, and that's uh, the finally done the trick. Yeah. And they're good to eat. Excellent table fish. Yeah. Little school mackerel. Yeah, beautiful table fish. Yeah. Oh, well. That's not too bad then. What? Put him in the esky. Put him in the box. I'll have him. We're on. Oh. Might want to get that one out of the way. Oh, he's out the back there a long, long way. Chris, I'm just a passenger at this point. The problem we've got is that's a reef yeah. and the fish is about, oh, gee, I don't know, 300 metres past it. This is On big the fish. other side. This is a big fish, just show the, your spool. I'm going to have to go out this way. Okay. Where's the line? 
belongs okay, directly on top right. of that roof. No, right, I'm trying to get around the side of it. Okay. We're chasing him. But the initial run of that fish was something else. It's not stuck on the rocks there, is it? Well, no. Right, Chris, what's the... Uh... I just got to keep you parallel to the fish. If he runs around, I just got to keep you along the side there of the There he is. Mackie. Oh, look at that. Okay, just leave him there. Oh, look, leave him look in the water. At that. Leave Back him in the water. Drag off a little bit, let him go a little bit. He's probably out of gas there. Just, just what, if he wants to run, let him run. Just keep nice, even pressure. Don't let the rod go straight. You're gonna bring him beside the boat for me. We're gonna. If you're gonna go around the front of the boat, you lift the line over the boat. Over the boat. Now I'm gonna come around sideways for you. Okay. Just trying to keep the fish at the side of the boat. Good fish. Nice a nice fish. Spaniard. Yeah. Nice, nice fish. No, and no I guess loose line. Keep it tight and shake them out if you do. The great uh, lesson of that is... There you go. Have confidence back, in your Pull him back towards me. Look at that for a fish. What a fearsome fish. And we've got him. Have confidence in your technique. There's your fish. And you'll be rewarded. Hold him up. Hold him up. Have a go at that That's for a Darwin Harbour Spaniard. That's where we come out here after. Whoa. Oh. Wow. Chris Hurt runs Lure One Charters, which fishes in and around Darwin Harbour. He specialises in mackerel and also barra fishing right in downtown Darwin. Call him today on 0437 321 Now, if you're in Darwin, the Frontier Hotel is the place to stay right in the heart of the city with pool, bar and a restaurant. Its stylishly appointed rooms offer a great place to recharge your batteries. Excellent. Yep, there you go, Darwin Harper and Lua One Fishing Charters. Yeah, give him a call. Come Man. to Darwin and give him a call. Give Chris a call Oof. because uh, he knows his stuff. Really does. Right in the middle of town. You can drive a long way here, as we've said, in the Territory. But, wow, well, that is a terrific fish. I'm Absolutely. very pleased with that. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, outstanding. It might be the end of the show for this week. I don't think we're going to top that, are we? No, I think we'll go no. to Mitchell Street. Right, eh? We'll see you again on Hook, Line and Sinker next week. Good day. Well done. Good fish. Big teeth. Hook, Line and Sinker goes to sea in the mighty bar crusher 640C. Proudly supplied by Coastal Marine. Power comes by the way of the awesome Yamaha F200 four-stroke. Yamaha, make it the heart of your boat. And when we fish, it's with quality Wilson Tackle. Since 1946, Wilson, the Australian tackle company. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.fishnet.com.au.